This is going to be a very special conversation about dreams. We haven't had any conversations about dreams. I'm very honored about that. Yeah. Thank you. Hope I can live up to it. Yeah. And I have been so looking forward to talking to you because I don't know anybody else, I don't think, who's yeah. kept a dream journal since the age of 13? Uh, I started a little at eight. But, uh, but, <laughs> that is so amazing to but, me. Uh, when I was like 13, 14, that's when I started like getting more you serious. You can tell about me it. about a recurring dream that you've had all your life, or yeah, I think it started as early as I can remember. So I think I might have had it when I was seven, actually. Um, wow. But certainly by eight, and then I had it through um, 18. I think it's the last time I remember uh, I had it. Um, and, uh, and as you tell it to me, okay. maybe we could see if you could sort of feel into it. Just let it be here. You know, let it. Uh, okay. <laughs> let it come into the room, into our bodies, into. Okay. And I'm going to share it with you because dreams are something to share. Absolutely. And feel it also. And. Okay. Um, I, um, just as a preference, whenever I usually dream, I, I figured this out when I was like going back to some of the things, but um, I kind of dream simultaneously in like a, kind of a third person overview of like watching yourself happening, but also mm. um, in a first person sense as well. So mm -hmm. usually I get both angles from that. Wow. So you dream from the third person looking at yourself and yeah. the first person being yourself During, at the same time. Yeah. And so it usually starts mm. off more as like a, a third person, kind of a surrounding. So I guess the dream <laughs> kind of, it always starts off um, in a, like a, a very wooded, um, like kind of alpine forest mm -hmm. um, with uh, no snow. It's like a temperate climate, but kind of the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, but just a canopy of trees. Mm. Um, just a and you're seeing them from above or? Yeah. Mm. Above, so maybe 200 or 300 feet above uh, the trees, mm. some birds flying. Um, mm. It's a canopy of trees, and then it eventually, uh, and then it kind of moves over and kind of like a lar almost like if a drone was like flying over um, these trees, and then eventually uh, a highway <laughs> comes through. But it's an elevated highway, so you can't see at any point. Can you see the? Uh, I guess the forest floor or a road. It's just this kind of elevated. Um, two-lane, not in a three-lane highway, um, surrounded by trees. And then mm -hmm. there's a white uh, Nissan uh, Maxima um, <laughs> driving um, down at my father's driving in the front. I'm in the back seat. Mm. This is where it kind of moves into a first person, and then I'm looking out the back of mm. his so Nissan you, Maxima. So it comes down into you, mm -hmm. and then you and then it's feel first yourself. Person. Yeah. I can see you know, hands, and uh, the it had it had um, this tan leather interior, so you could see mm. kind of actually like this chair kind of um, just a lot mm. lighter. Um, mm -hmm. And um, looking out the back, and then and then it switches back to third person, kind of this overarching view, and there's a in the distance is a bear running on. Uh, the highway, um, you know, coming at us, um, and as it gets closer and closer, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, oh. and then eventually, um, and then eventually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm telling my dad to go faster, but not in a not in a hurried you're way though. You're telling your dad to go faster. Drive, yeah. He at no point does he drive speak. Drive faster, yeah. you're saying. But only, uh, you know, twice, and not in a hurried state. I think everything's remarkably calm. Um, mm. The bear keeps getting closer and closer and closer and closer until it kind of is kind of over the um, car and then it just stops. And, and then, then the, the dream the stops. Over. Yeah. Wow. And that's been, I've probably had that dream, I um, haven't counted, but uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 times. Mm -hmm. At different years. points in your yeah. life from the mm -hmm. age of seven mm -hmm. till, yeah. and how old are you now? I am 29. 29. Uh, wow, what old. a nice age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the last time I had that dream was um, 18. So. so you brought that into the room and that, the whole feeling of that dream. Yeah. What's the atmosphere of it? Um, there, I think it's like a, um, uh, I guess a kind of a, a calm foreboding. Mm. Maybe, mm. I think. Mm. Cause let, I think me, let me say that and then see if when I say it, if it, it sort of touches 
that yeah. a calm foreboding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can feel that a little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, it's not uh, it's not frantic, you know. It's not like um, mm -hmm. some I don't know some movie where someone's chasing people or freaking out. There's really no mm. freaking out going on. Um, yeah. Mm. So just spare that. So I, I don't know. I have no idea what it means. Um, it's just something you know had for, for a long time. So yeah. and it's the one that I remember the best because I've had it so many times. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could almost be the name of the dream: the calm, foreboding. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that like that. I've never actually, no one's ever asked me to describe it, yeah, so. Was there a different feeling when the dream begins and there's just that canopy of trees and the birds and you're looking down on it? Was that? I think it's a little bit, but it's very um, slight. It does, it does change. Uh, I think the foreboding does ratchet up, but it goes from like, say, a three to like a four and a half. Mm, so, so it's, it's foreboding at the beginning too. Uh huh. Yeah. Even though there are birds and. I mean, yeah, I play. I mean, maybe just a feeling that maybe things aren't. I mean, maybe maybe it's like a, a maybe it's like um, maybe a, a tr I don't know. It's like a tranquil. Or this is a, this is a maybe a, sus a suspicious tranquility. Maybe maybe mm. that's the way of saying it. Maybe mm. kind of like a, you see a duck on a, on the water mm. and it looks. It's very calm, it's gliding, but if you go underneath the water, its feet are like paddling. Mm, like, like under the minute. surface, yeah. something is amiss. Something yeah. is... Something you can't quantify, you can't really describe, but mm. yeah, something's there, yeah. And then yeah. the bear comes in, and then you, you, know, you figure it out. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting that sense of that the duck and, and under the water this franticness yeah but but then on the surface it seems really calm mm -hmm. and on the surface everything is um, under control in a way there's no yeah. screaming yelling yeah um, but under the surface you know there's something <sighs> yeah, something scary it's, right. gra it's gradually, scary. gradually making its way. Yeah, its gradually way. getting more and more mm -hmm. dangerous, more and more ominous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. More in your face, more undeniable, more. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it keeps getting uh, the intensity. Um, increases to a point where you, you can't really avoid it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's your association to that car? It's such a specific, <laughs> that's so interesting, yeah. isn't it? That it's such a specific car. My dad had this Nissan Maxima, but it had a, a voice in it, so it would talk to you. Really? So I would say, um, I guess they got rid of it because people thought it was creepy or something. As a like kid, Alexa. I, I, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, but my, my dad, uh, I loved it as a kid because it would be like, right, door is open or, you know, um, tell you to put your seatbelt on or it would, you know, like you're running low on gas. <laughs> um, you know, that kind of stuff. There, a light would come on too, but it would have all these things it could say. And I guess as a kid, you know, we would, uh, all my friends got a kick out of it too. So we would <laughs> purposely leave the door open and then you could just to hear the, the voice and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I think my dad liked it too. Um, I thought it was, mm -hmm. it was very cool. And the car has uh, a feeling of being cool and, and yeah. connected to your dad, that you and your dad are so. together in, in it. I do, yeah. I mean, it's, um, I don't, you know, my dad was uh, traveling a lot when I was a kid. He's actually on a flight to Europe when I was born, actually. Um, and so he would do, when I was a kid, he would go away for, um, you know, three months at a time and things like that. And so, you know, perhaps there's, you know, some, I don't know, some longing or something like that, or, I don't know, desire to, um, I don't know, maybe there's some connection with that, I don't know, but yeah. yeah just give that a minute, because you're on to something, I think, here. The okay. feeling of that car and the togetherness yeah. in it, yeah. being in the same car and the coolness and other kids really loving that car yeah. and it talking to you and, yeah. and something about a longing yeah. for more with your dad, for more. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe the... Um I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's uh, one of those things where you know when you're. Um, I, knew, I'm not, I, I guess I maybe subconsciously knew this, but when you're, you know, I, I knew that he was going to leave in a certain amount of time, and so I guess any time interaction, you know, is only temporary. Um, 
and uh, which I guess is maybe somewhat different than maybe having your father when he works in the same town or whatever mm. the person you do so you know that you're always going to see them that kind of thing so I, I don't know maybe the uh, and, and I, I know usually you know, whether it's vacation or what have you when you get towards the end maybe an experience mm. becomes a little more bittersweet because maybe mm. you realize it's mm. more immediate you know that it's coming to an end so I don't know, you know perhaps mm. I um, and you know I, I know that you know from the inception it's going to end and then Mm. Maybe that's the you know the foreboding or, or something like that, knowing mm. that it, that it will will be mm. over at some point, mm. you know, and then mm. he's gonna go yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that part back and see how it connects inside. <laughs> that's yeah. the big um, uh, clicking in. You know, like <laughs> yeah. we can we can have all kinds of thoughts about something, yeah. but then some thoughts like really sort of oh, yeah. like yes. That really right. So yeah. when if I say it and then you say yeah, I do have a feeling okay. of that. So, so this part is like um, that being with your dad in mm. that kind of intimate way of being on the voyage together, being mm. in the same car, being in the special car mm. together, just the two of you. Mm. Always that kind of intimacy had this feeling that it's going to end, mm -hmm. that you have to prepare, yeah. and that the end is coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I still, still think about that in a different way. I remember when I was a kid, I saw this commercial. I think it was aimed at more at um, adults, but um, it was about how you need to spend time with your your parents and say what you really need to say because you know they could you know get hit by a bus tomorrow or something like that. And, Remember, there's this one woman who, uh, you know, was like crying because her father was like grave, and she's like, "Oh, sorry, Dad." And I, I remember as a kid, even when he would drive me to school um, sometimes instead of taking the bus. Yeah, he would. Yeah, and I would make sure I like talked to him the whole time. I didn't want to have any silent moments. I think that commercial really did. I mean, you know, in hindsight, you know, it was, you know, I was aimed at you know other people, but I think at the time I was like, "Oh yeah, I better make sure I." I think even when I was a kid, there was a sense of urgency, even just uh, talking to him and that kind of thing. So this oh. is a further piece here of, yeah. of this urgency that that was always there yeah. about the shortness of time and that he would yeah, leave yeah. the feel the <laughs> foreboding of preparing for separation yeah. and I guess in a way never being able to just relax into the feeling of continuity and ongoingness that's um that's a really <laughs> good point yeah I think the not being able to relax is something that I've uh, just in general only starting to kind of touch the surface of right now. But yeah, yeah, I think the thing not not being able to relax, I think, yeah, that's something that's not just, I guess, just enjoying your parents or my parents, but just kind of in general, I think, with relationships. Yeah. And Matt goes on from here to talk more about his dream and his family, and you can watch a longer version on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.